It's about to get Gabby AF. We about to get Gabby AF, Gabby AF. We about to get Gabby AF, Gabby AF. It's nothing less, cause you rocking with the best. Now we about to get Gabby AF. Hello and welcome to another episode of Gabby AF. We are post WrestleMania. So it's been a crazy wild weekend and a crazy wild week. So I had to bring in one of my good friends, WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. Devon Dudley. Hello, Devon. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you, Gabby? I am good. I had to bring you on my show before, uh, you know, Bubba, because as I've always said, you are my favorite <laughs> half of the tag team. So I had to get well, you thank on. thank you. I'm a lot of people's favorite when it comes to the Dudley Boys. Listen, that's, Bubba, what, that's, Bubba, that's what I've heard. Well, you know, they, Bubba scares a lot of people, so, you know. <laughs> Listen, he, he definitely does. I don't um, blame him for doing that. He's a little scary, but I will say this about him, and this is the one nice thing I will always say about him. People like to say that because he does come off a little scary, I would say, on TV, and he's kind of always mm -hmm. the bad guy. He has always been, and he's going to kill me for saying this, because he's like, don't tell anybody that I'm nice, but he's always very, very kind to me and always been supportive of me and will send me texts when I'm doing things well and gives me advice and stuff. So, like, shout out to Bully, because I do love him, even though, you know, he's Bully Ray. But I get to see a different side of him, which is nice, working with him for as long as I did. You and I both, I mean, I've had 20 years with him. 20 years plus. A little plus bit longer him, so, than me. <laughs> you know, I, I've seen, I, yeah, I've seen a little bit of the Bubba that nobody else sees, so I get it. Yeah. I understand, but I also understand why he does, why he acts the way he acts with people. Yes. You know, if people can take advantage of you, they will. Yes. And then what they do is they kind of like, oh, I don't mean any harm. Yes, you do. Stop lying. Well, yes, when you catch you do. them in it, you know, when you're And that's when, like that, yeah. If you catch them in it, they like to be like, oh, they like to play dumb. Like, oh, I didn't, oh my God, that was I didn't, mean that. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Yes, you did. And I love it because Bubba calls them out on it. Well, Bubba all, completely calls him out. We're all New Jersey, New Yorkers. We don't, we don't, we can't, we read right through the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. Why I, that's why me and you became friends so quickly because you were like, I already know. There's no well, BS not only with that, you. But, not only that, but Bubba goes, you're going to, you, you're going to think she's just beautiful. And I was like, yeah, I do. Wow. Well, you know, looks, <laughs> See, there you go. Looks only get you so far though. Cause if you can't, if you don't have a good personality, who cares if you're good looking or not? You know what I mean? Well, that's the way I, that's the way I feel about me. You know, it looks only get me so far, you know? Yeah. Thank God. You're more, you know what I'm saying? Like you look at you and you're like, wow, that's a handsome, that's a damn handsome man. But like, at least he, he has a good personality too. Thank God. Otherwise you're just I love boring. You. See, I love that. <laughs> so, I mean, we got to talk. I mean, it's been a crazy week in pro wrestling, so I'm very happy to have you here because Menu. there's a lot we got to talk about. Obviously, so many positives coming out of um, WrestleMania. We got to talk about, uh, speaking of Bubba, you know, special guest refereeing as well, which I popped for huge. I was actually on the floor for that, and it was amazing, <laughs> and I loved it so right. much. <laughs> Before we get into Mania and all that kind of stuff, though, there is something – you know, that kind of just happened. I had to get your take on, we were talking about it a little before and you were like, save it for the show, Gabby, let's just start recording. But um, AEW Dynamite last night, they decided to air the actual footage from, you know, the altercation between CM Punk and Jack Perry backstage at All In last year. Um, I'm dying to get your thoughts on what you think of them airing this on Dynamite and kind of just actually showing the footage of what had happened. And this is coming off of, you know, the reaction of CM Punk's interview with Ariel Hawani where he talked about it. So what are your thoughts um, on AEW showing this and just everything in general? Well, you know, it is a sad thing that happened in the business um, with the whole thing, you know, when CM Punk was there, because nobody really should have to go through that stuff. No company should ever have to see that. But at the same token, you know, when you have the inmates running the asylum, then this is what happens. So, again, I'm not there. I'm not in AEW. So I don't really know the going-ons in there. But I don't think it should have been appropriate to air something like that. Even though it happened months ago or almost a year ago, however long it was, that's something that you don't just air out. That's your dirty laundry. You keep that to yourself. The problem was handled. Punk moved on. Now it's time for AEW to move on. You know, uh, yeah. Jack Perry 
You know, Jack Perry is somewhere in Japan, and let's just leave it like that. So to actually air that, I'm not sure why they did that, and I, I don't get it, nor do I understand it. You know, they might say, oh, well, we needed to expose this because Punk needed to be exposed. No, you did it for a cheap rating. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not the only one that feels that way. Right. Uh, there's a lot of AEW hardcore fans that feel the same way. So I'm not saying anything negative about the company, but I do think this is one of the problems that Tony Khan has. He has a lot of yes people and not enough people to tell him no don't do this because if he's in fact really running the show fully on his own then he should know better than to do something like that and that's not going to cause nothing but negativity sometimes negativity works but in that aspect mm, not so much and i look at it like this also because a lot of people kind of agreed with punk and what happened and what he did. It was a lot of people, even AEW fans that agreed with it. There were some that didn't, but there were a lot of people that did agree with it because it just seems like the inmates are running the show over there uh, with no organization or things like that that's going on over there. So look, again, I don't know, you know, because I don't work for the company. I'm a big fan of a lot of the talent that's there. Uh, I met a lot of them on the Jericho Cruise. I met a lot of them at autograph signings. Great guys, really great guys. Um, you know, I've got nothing negative to say about anybody in that company. Um, everybody that I've met has been nothing but respectful towards me. And, you know, it's been given right back. But in saying that, again, you cannot have the inmates running the asylum. This is exactly what happened with WCW. There was no one to say no. There was no, and I'm going to probably get criticized for saying this, but there was no Vince McMahon who, you know, regardless of the allegations that's going on against him right now, he did keep a tight ship. And you would think twice about doing anything if Vince said no to something. You didn't question him. You did exactly what he said, and that was it, or you were gone. And I think that's what Tony's missing over there. I think he has to get control of his organization because if not, it's going to be another WCW. And this is a prime example. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if you're a talent with AEW, I know that there's, you know, reports coming out, rumors that like a lot of talent are unhappy that that had happened and that they showed the footage. Like they just think the morale is kind of low in that sense. Um, I mean, if this doesn't, I, I think the, it had to be motivated by wanting to up a rating at this point because I don't really see what else the point was. It wasn't such a wild story that it completely went against what Punk said happened. Whereas if it was something opposite and Punk had completely lied about the situation, I'd be like, yeah, then show it. That makes sense. Then it's going to make them look better. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I, I didn't see it that way. I saw it as, okay, this is kind of what he had said happened. I, I get it. And <clears throat> like, if you don't see, I don't know what the rating is. It hasn't, I don't even think it's even come out yet from like last night, but do you think this is just an epic and utter fail for AEW? Even if it does pop the rating like they need to, is that enough to make this not seem like such a negative decision? Or do you think even if it pops the rating, they get a million views or something like that from that? Isn't that kind of just like a cheap kind of way to get those ratings? Like, what do you would you agree with that or do you think okay anything to get a rating at this point well i do agree with that i think it's a cheap way to get a rating like that um but i also think that it might not get the rating that they think it might get i yeah. could be totally wrong right i could be off right you know they could they can get over a million views after this i don't know but i don't in my heart and my years of being in this business i just don't see it happening so I really wish Tony could bring somebody in there that really knows how to run a wrestling company the way it should. Somebody that will tell him no when you need to tell him no. Somebody that's going to take charge. Because if you don't have that, you're not going to have a company for long. I don't care how much money you have. You can keep pouring money into a bottomless pit. And if you don't get your organization correct, it's not going to last. Prime example, WCW. Prime example, the beginnings of TNA with the Dixie Carter's regime. You know, her dad had a lot of money too and was basically pouring money into an organization 
that kept making mistakes after mistakes after mistake. And with that being said, they paid the ultimate price where they almost went under. And then the new regime came in, someone took over and started to correct the mistakes that were done. And now they got like a whole new shot in the arm. It's like they're they're doing great now, which I'm very happy to say, very proud of the people in TNA. But you know, that's something that AEW should maybe take, you know, a page out of their book and move totally in that direction and see how it works for them. Because again, if they don't, it's not gonna last. It's just not gonna be around. And it's gonna be a place where nobody's gonna wanna go, regardless of how much money you throw at people. I mean, you know, some people would like to say, well, if I throw them $3 million, they'll be happy. Yes and no. But, you know, you bring a lot of people in on contract and you bring them in for about a month or two and then you send them home. It's like they're no longer the toy of the week. Right. It's like you play with them for a little bit and then all of a sudden, I'm going to put you on the shelf for a while. You go sit back. I don't really have plans for you right now, but I'm going to go to the next toy. And that's what it seems like is going on. And that I hear a lot of. I don't really watch the show. Then again, I don't really watch wrestling that much at all. I, I do watch a lot of WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, because I'm a WWE guy. Right. Hands down, WWE guy, uh, ECW guy, uh, all the way. Um, and I'm not, and again, I'm not saying anything negative or bad about AEW. It's just that I don't really watch the product that much um, to know uh a lot of the people uh that is in that organization but you know when you hear stuff on social media when you hear other wrestlers and other people within the business talk about it you can't help but to go man this is not gonna last long if they don't shape up and the crazy thing to me and people were pointing out all over twitter last night and social media was the crowd was chanting cm punk at certain points in the show when like they showed the how the actual altercation on the screen during the show people were chanting CM Punk and during one of the matches too I don't remember which one they were like that has to be the <clears throat> like the worst sorry I don't know I have a cold that has to be one of the worst backfires in it is you have someone like a CM Punk that you're trying to basically say like hate him and the crowd is chanting for him and those are like diehard fans they're at your show so I just think as a fan and I'm just a fan, right? I watch as a fan. I watch everything as a fan. Um, mm-hmm. I think that was a misfire. And I don't like to talk negatively about anything, especially on my show, because I, what do I know compared to someone like you or some of the people that I talk to who have been in this yeah. business much longer than me? But it was almost like one of those things where I feel like opening Pandora's box in that sense and showing something mm-hmm. like that, that goes on. I don't even want to see it because I feel like I don't, I shouldn't be having to see that, if that makes sense. Like, I should be watching what you show me on the screen, and all that stuff should be dealt with between the people that are in the business, behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Not not me. It's not for me to make a judgment about. It's not. I I don't have the actual stance to do that, if that makes any sense. Well, I'm going to say this. The WWE made CM Punk. CM Punk made CM Punk. Yeah. So when he went over to AEW, he was like a treasure. You know, he, yeah. he was like the diamond in the rough. He really was. So, and I think Paul Heyman said it best, how many times he's been canceled, right. but yet he keeps coming back and reinventing himself and becoming more than what he was before he was canceled. I think in this aspect, and I'm not looking at it, and I, maybe it's not the right thing to compare it to, but if CM Punk was canceled in AEW, now he goes back home where he belongs, and now he's becoming a bigger star than he was before he left. Right. And now CM Punk is back on top again. People love CM Punk. People want to see CM Punk. So to actually try to maybe show that video because you're going to try to put him in a negative light, when someone goes back home that was popular in WWE and gets over the way CM Punk has, you trying to hurt him or embarrass him is really not going to work, especially if the man is telling the truth about what he said went on. And like you said, it's been documented. It's on video that exactly how he described everything was to a T, exactly what what happened. So kudos to, you know, for CM Punk. And, you know, I, I don't know what I can say about AEW and Tony Khan for doing that. But like I said, 
he's now even a bigger star now in WWE, even more than when he before he left. Right. Uh, you know, to go anywhere else. So, and and AEW did not do that for him. Right. And he and it, and it could have been that way for him, really. Like when he changed the game when he did go to AEW, in my opinion, when his debut was like the most watched thing ever. It was Chicago, and then he did it again in Chicago for WWE. Mm -hmm. So like, and like I always talk about CM Punk in this way for me as well because I wasn't watching. And when he was in WWE his first time around, I know CM mm -hmm. Punk starting as a fan because I only started watching as a fan from the beginning of AEW, really, for me, like six years. So to see this evolution of CM Punk in my eyes as a newer fan in this kind of perspective, like I do have so much love for him because of what he brings everywhere he goes. And he's just monumental in that sense. Like he's going to have fans. People are going to love him no matter what. And he's just one of those people. And I think because he does whatever he wants and because he's not scared to say whatever he wants is why people like him so much. And it's why the fans are so behind him because. Well, no, I'm sorry to me to cut no. you off. It's kind of like, cause I'll, I'll forget too many headshots. Yeah. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like what you said about Bubba. Yeah. You know, it's like 100%. Bubba is Bubba's real. He's going to tell you how it is, whether you like it or not. And that's just the way it is. You know, I happen to have met CM Punk for the first time uh, this past WrestleMania um, in an elevator. I was getting on the elevator because I, when I saw you CM Punk, too. I sure did. <laughs> we bumped into each other. I was like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, like, Bubba like to say the, 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 the scene from, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I saw you. I was like, "Hey, you got any iced tea?" <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, no, but you know, I met him for the first time because Bubba had met him previously back in 2011 at a gym in Orlando, and I had never met him because when he came into WWE in 2005, Bubba and I had left for Japan and TNA, so I never got the opportunity to meet him. And then, like I said, this past weekend at WrestleMania. Me and my wife and kids, we were in the elevator, and Dominic comes in. You know, I'd known Dominic for a long time, and even when I was producing, uh, then all of a sudden, the next stop was CM Punk. I was like, oh. So. He looked at me. I looked at him. I was like, yo, what's going on, man? He was like, Yvonne. You know, we were like, hey. I was like, hey, you know, nice to meet you, man. I've never met you before. And I told him the whole story, how he met Bubba first. And, you know, I said, I said, but don't worry about it. I'm the better looking of the W. Yes. <laughs> he kind of cracked and smiled. And I was like, no, I said, all jokes aside, I said, uh, but pleasure meeting you, man. He came off as one of the most pleasant guys I think I'd ever met. Again, I'm not the Young Bucks. Right. I'm not Kenny Omega. Jack you know, Perry. if they all, Jack Perry, if they all have beef with him, that's them. I'm not going to judge Punk because they have beef with him. I only judge Punk how he is with me. Right. He was a complete gentleman. And, um, you know, kudos, my hat goes off to him. And I'm glad he's not out here in social media right. um, going back and forth with this crap and giving life to it. Thank God he's not. He doesn't need to. Listen, Punk, if you ever see this or if, if the writers, you know, ever if the dirt sheet writers ever put this out, listen, mm -hmm. you don't need to go out there and do this. Forget them. You know, forget that crap. You know, move on. You're bigger than that. Go on and do your thing and continue to be the greatest CM Punk of all time. That's what I think Punk should do at this point in stage of the game. And I think that's what Punk will do. Yes, I agree. I 100% agree on all that. And I think the fact that this had come out after such a successful WrestleMania, which I think we should mm -hmm. shift and talk to because talk about because it was just probably the greatest WrestleMania of all time, which is everyone is uh, saying. That it, listen, uh, I, I get. For, uh, <laughs> listen, it was great. It was great. WrestleMania 17 will always be in my heart. Why? TLC match, oh, the yeah, Dudleys, obviously. Edge and Christian and Artie stole the show, and then it was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. So when something else tries to top that, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. No, WrestleMania 17 will always be number one in my book because I was in it. Yeah, I mean, you have a little bit different of a perspective than I do. Just that, you know, that small TLC match didn't really, you know, go down in history or anything. Uh, no it big never, deal. It never, really got, it never really got over. Never really got over, no. All, all bullies fall, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, for me as a fan, this is now, besides studying and watching WrestleMania's back, which I started to do when I did get into, you know, working this way, this was my sixth WrestleMania watching um as being in it, I, in the business, I would say. And it's the third WrestleMania I've been to, which is kind of cool. By far, greatest WrestleMania for me to ever see. 
um, that moment for Cody was just, I think, and I just think that main event in general, even having the surprises that they had, and I think it was just epic. I, maybe because I was on the floor too when it was going on, so my experience mm -hmm. was like there. I wasn't sitting up in a suite. I wasn't in the press box like I was the first night. Like I actually got to be on the floor experiencing how these diehard fans are experiencing. People were crying. Like it was insane. You know, Undertaker showing up, Cena showing up. Like it was just, I never thought I would be even in the presence of Undertaker showing up at a WrestleMania because I'm like, oh, that's never going to happen in my time ever again. And I was there for it. And I got to experience like the bong, like the dong and the, I don't even know if that's the right word for it. Well, but, like, the great thing, the great thing about it is they told a great story yes, leading up to this. 100%. And that's why when you can emotionally invest in a, in a, in a, in a fraction, like the bloodline or Cody and, uh, you know, Seth Rollins being together, when you can actually invest in something like this, that's great because emotionally you will become attached. Right. And this whole Cody crybaby thing, uh, what The Rock was doing, how The Rock was once one of the beloved wrestlers of all time. You hear his music, the fans would go crazy. Now you hear his music and the fans would boo. Crazy. Even though in some aspects they were cheering, but, you know, he, he became a heel and, you know, the way they put you on that roller coaster ride uh, leading up to, you know, Cody, you know, going, winning and going over on Roman, breaking the streak. I mean, it was phenomenal. I enjoyed it. And again, I don't really watch it as much as I should. Mm -hmm. I try to catch it when I can. But the whole bloodline thing I've been watching uh, since day one yeah. um, and fell in love with it. Uh, Rhea and uh, Becky Lynch fantastic you know uh the street profits you know going in there doing their things and i love those guys those guys are great uh and a great tribute uh to uh the dudley boys with the what's up yeah. and my testify and the spinning around i thought it was great uh i did i did mention to martez listen you're spinning way too much. I only did two spins. That was it. You had so much damn energy. You were just going. <laughs> he's, he's insane. I, I, he, he, is in, he is totally, I mean, God, I wish I had his energy. Oh Shit, God. I wish I had his legs. Yeah. <laughs> Good I, God. Right. I wish I had the cartilage in his legs. I'd be able to do the things that that man does. My legs are shot. <laughs> he's amazing. Uh, he's, he is. He's literally amazing. But I mean, it was really, it really was a good WrestleMania. You know, I, all jokes aside about WrestleMania 17, you know, I'm glad that they were able to make 40, you know, which in my opinion is a milestone. I know 50 would be probably even bigger, but 40 was really, really good. Um, with a lot of the matches um, that we saw, there wasn't a dull moment and they sold out back to back. I don't know any wrestling company that can sell out the same arena back to back the way the WWE does. Right. Kudos to the new era of Triple H and the WWE. I love it. Um, again, I respect Vince and what he's accomplished from his father and his grandfather. But, you know, with everything that's going on right now, I don't touch. Uh, not my business. I'm not with the company anymore, so I don't right. say anything on terms of that. But I'm really excited to see where Triple H and the new era goes. And uh, I think big things on the horizon. I'm sorry, but there isn't another company out there that's hotter than the WWE right now. Oh, not even close, in my opinion. I think it's hitting on all cylinders. And I, I had friends texting me that don't watch pro wrestling, that only kind of watch casually in the sense that they're my friends and I want to talk to them about it. And they were texting me about WrestleMania, like Cody finally finished his story. Like, well, and they're saying this to me and like, they don't even know. And I think that's a testament to this new era of the WWE bringing the rock in obviously brought those casual fans in as well. It's the rock. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. what I loved about the whole story is that even if the rock wasn't brought in, I would still be as emotionally invested as I was because that's, the kind of person that Cody is. I think he's just to be the face of the company in what he's done and the story he's told going to AEW, doing this, coming back, having his family. Like it's just, it, it was just perfection. Like I think the emotion at the end when everyone came out, when everyone's crying, like you can't, it's, it's almost like, um, 
you almost don't think it, it's it's almost like a what was I gonna say like a like a story that you'd watch on TV like a movie it's it's gonna be made into a movie at some point I could guarantee his whole life and like twenty years thirty years are gonna look back and Cody Rhodes is gonna have an epic story and it's just it's just so great because bringing in those casual fans I think is what is always the goal is to bring people back and to make pro wrestling cool again which The Rock said that he has done now um, but I think also something that Triple H is doing in this era is bringing in outside fans that wouldn't be watching with the inclusions of people like Logan Paul, because mm -hmm. Logan Paul hits on all cylinders, especially for my age group. And especially for the people that are only on social media, the TikToks, the influencers, they're all watching pro wrestling right now because Logan Paul is such a massive star and he's yes. so damn good. Like, I'm sorry. I, I, I did not see him picking it up this fast. I don't think anybody saw this. I think they probably looked at him as being some guy that said, oh, I can do this. Yeah. And nowhere near as good as he is. Logan Paul is extremely good. Yeah. And kudos, my hat goes off to him because this is something that you can't just wake up and decide you want to do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it just becomes natural. He's a natural. He really, really is. And one of the things I wanted to say also was that going back to the whole Cody Rose story yeah. with The Rock, and my and I loved Undertaker being. I loved everybody from John Cena to Undertaker and blah blah blah. I don't know how if we would have did this. I don't know how it would have been, how you would have been able to take out the Undertaker. But I think the final nail in the coffin for that to help Cody would have been Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. And I say that because of the history between Steve Austin and The Rock. Mm -hmm. If you can remember the last time these two met, The Rock beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. And there was a lot of matches before that where Stone Cold went over. Um, and, you know, I think that, that remember, the last thing we saw was Austin down on his back, Rock sitting up, whispering something to him, talking to him, and this and that pushed Earl Hebner out the way because he only wanted him and Austin to hear what was going on and what he was saying to him. And it was like that little bit right there showed me that there could have been a possible continuation yeah. where – you know, the lights go out, there's Austin. Austin comes in, now he puts the rock down, he takes him out. But, you know, again, me being a producer in the WWE, sometimes ideas like that, even though we say that would have been great, we don't know what it would have taken to have Austin be there. And maybe Austin couldn't make it. Maybe he had other obligations somewhere else. I don't know. But I, to me, that would have been phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And I think that was a lot of people were expecting to see Stone Cold. Like it was kind of mm -hmm. what was in the air. It was like, yeah. is it going to be Stone Cold? And then when you heard that, that when the lights went out and it was The Undertaker, it was like, holy shit, because no one expected it because they really did think it was going to be Steve. Yeah, and yeah I thought it, it was going to be Steve. Yeah. yeah. So like it was almost like, thank God they had that because uh, it was kind of a whole different kind of shock. And, and, I, and I still cheer. I still just cheered just as hard. Oh, yeah. You know, and I was, I was still just as happy. You know, yeah. I was in my sky booth going, yes, yes, take it, go, go. Meanwhile, I've, I've stolen how many titles from him? <laughs> and I'm looking at it as a fan. <laughs> That's the best, though. Like, I love talking to guys like you who are, who are fans of it, even though you've been in the business for so long. Because, you know, some people can be jaded or they can be upset with kind of what has happened in their careers or bitter or whatever. And, like, you're a fan of it while you're in it, which mm -hmm. is why I love it. And that's why I love talking to you about it. Because you're always honest about your opinions, but you also – talk about it as a fan too as opposed to yeah. being able to have the producer brain which you also do have so it's so interesting that i love that you were marking out for him just like everybody else oh, and absolutely. excited listen you know just because and i've and i've said this before and i know bubba like to tease a lot of people for this and he's even teased me just because you're in the business and you work with people and so that doesn't mean that you can't be invested into the storyline as well I don't think that I'm on a higher pedestal that I can't be like the guy down below yeah. that enjoys watching professional wrestling as a fan. You know, if I feel like I should be happy and show my excitement, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I don't care about what anybody says. Like, Bubba used to always tease me, you know, like I would wear like the new Dudley Boy shirt would come out. So, you know, I would get one and then wear it, you know, I wake up that morning, put it on, wear it through the airports and, and you know, going to the arena and Bubba would be like, what the hell, you're a mark. Well, who the hell you wearing your shirt for? I'm like, dude, I, I should wear my shirt if I want to get other people. The, the greatest person to do that is Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He doesn't go anywhere without wearing something that says Hulkamania. And you know what? He's a walking billboard for himself. Because at the end of the day,
people will see that and go, some people might say, oh yeah, I've seen that shirt before. Some might say, I've never seen it. You know what? I need to go get one. Where can I get one? Yeah. And guess what? That's money in your pocket. So why wouldn't you walk around with your shirt? Of course, I'm going to be a mark. I'm going to wear my shirt. You're damn right I am. Well, and a million people <laughs> want pictures with you, and then they're going to put those pictures up, and everyone's going to be like, where can I get that shirt that he's wearing? It's exactly. Kind of... it's like, exactly. You're not getting yourself over. No one's going to do it for you. That's the first thing I ever learned. That's 100% true. Be your own Did, you own Did you learn that from Bubba? Did you learn that from Bubba? Listen, he's told me a lot of things that some of them, <laughs> some of them, yes, I keep with me every day, but he's probably given me some of the best advice, I will say, because. Um, Bubba is very good when it comes to stuff like that. He's extremely good. Knowledge of the business and just life. Yes. And, it, you know, giving you advice. He's very, very good. Kudos to my brother. I take my hat off to him. I love him to death, even though sometimes I like to take a chair and wrap it around his head. Uh, <laughs> but I still love him to death. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I love him. Shout out to him. What would you think of his um, special guest refereeing at, at Mania? How did you think he did? I thought, I thought it was great. You know, I would have loved to have been out there. You know, I think a lot of people have to understand, you know, sometimes the body doesn't move the way it, you know, wants to. And, uh, you know, we had wrestled uh, at the ECW arena. Um, what was it like two nights prior to or three nights prior to WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not really in the ring that much like that anymore. So when I do a match, my body's like, Oh my God, I'm like shutting down. And you know, my back was killing me. My legs were killing me. I was like, Oh my God. I had somebody asked, why weren't you there? I said, man, if I would have walked down that ramp with Bubba, it would have been WrestleMania 50 by the time I would have got to, to the bottom of it. I was, I was sore as hell, man. Just and we did a we didn't even do that much at the ECW arena with uh, Tommy Dreamer and uh, Onita from FMW, but it was enough to where, man, I was sore the next two or three days, man. Yeah. Good God! So you know, again, certain things like that. You know, I love it that Bubba represents the yeah. family. And he goes out there and does what he does. And the great thing about it was people were saying that people were chanting, where's Devon? Well, that's even better. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm being forgotten. So, hey, there you go. <laughs> listen, I'm not even there. Listen, uh, that, that's all. You, you don't even have to be there for people to, to miss you. That's how you know you're over. You know exactly. what I mean? And I thought he looked good. Don't let him know that I think he looks good. But I thought he looked great. And I thought he did a really, really good job. Um, I popped huge in the stands with everybody else when he came out. I thought it was really, really awesome. And, you know, you mentioned ECW, obviously, um, you know, Mr. Paul Heyman just inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, his speech, I think, was like the most watched Hall of Fame speech of like all time, which <laughs> listen, his, his speech made me sweat. <laughs> it was on, it was amazing. I felt like that. Yeah. You know why I love Paul Heyman? Because that's what he reminds me of is like, that's how I would talk to my friends and to people is just saying the things that he said, which is bad. But like, I love that about Paul Heyman so much. What did you like? Obviously, you know him and you know a lot more mm -hmm. about ECW than I ever would. What did you think about the induction, his speech, kind of everything about that? I thought the induction was great for Paul because Paul really did deserve it. Yeah. Paul helped change the face of professional wrestling. Um, of course, along with Cactus Jack and Terry Funk and Onita bringing FMW style from Japan uh, to the United States, which ECW was born. But with the ideas and the booking of Paul Heyman and how he ran that company, it was great and how he gave a bunch of misfit, misfits an opportunity when other wrestling organizations wouldn't have dared given us an opportunity. He did. And he made us into stars, you know? Yeah. Um, and I like to say we were stars in ECW, but we became superstars in WWE. Mm. And so, you know, in order for us to be able to become that superstar, first we had to become a star, and Paul Heyman helped us do that. So well-deserved um, for him being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And again, if it wasn't for him, there would be no attitude error. There would be no Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, there would be none of us. So I'm very happy and proud that, you know, WWE and now the fans have acknowledged him to put him in uh, to the Hall of Fame. I thought it was great. Now, his speech, on the other hand, <laughs> ooh, that was a little crazy for me because, you know, no one has ever spoken like that. I um, at the Hall of Fame. I mean, he kept it real. I mean, that was one of the things. He kept it real. But no one had ever done that before. 
and the language that was being used. I, I'm listening to it in the arena. Yeah. So I don't know what was bleeped and what wasn't at home, but I'm sure you can make out what he was saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, even though it was being bleeped, but you know that was probably the first time I think anyone has ever done that before, and that's just true Paul Heyman form. You know, yeah. he's not going to be the same like everybody else. Paul is going to be Paul. He's going to be different, but he's going to be entertaining. And your eyes will be glued to that TV set from the time he comes on until the time he says goodnight. Yeah. And I thought it was a beautiful moment when he, um, you know, said how proud he was to be working with Paul Levesque in this new era. And he kind of mm-hmm. sh- stood up and shook his hand. Like, I thought that was a really, really amazing moment, especially obviously well, I mean, for Paul. But Yep, I'm going to say this. You know, Triple H, Paul Levesque, he's he's great in his own when it comes to booking and, and psychology um, and pro wrestling. Paul Heyman, we all know what he can do. Put those two together, and this will be an era that will never be topped. I mean, I'm, I, you know, nothing again against Vince McMahon and what he's done for over 50 years. But, you know, just like Vince used to tell talent, you know, sometimes it gets to that point where, you know, the old line has to step aside mm-hmm. and let that new line come in and and bring in, you know, that that new feel uh, to the business. And this is what we needed. This was the shot in the arm that we needed. Unfortunately, what transpired on how he got there in terms of Triple H, main, you know, wasn't good for business, but you know something, we're getting over that, we're getting past it. And Triple H is doing a fantastic job along with Paul Heyman and the rest of the crew that's behind him, uh, making this new era work. And, you know, I was so happy to see Stephanie McMahon, uh, you know, open up the show. And uh, I'm a big fan of Stephanie. I got to be careful what I say about Stephanie. Last time I said I was infatuated with her when I should have when I should have used the word um, not infatuated. Uh, I should have used admired, and yeah. the people went crazy. Oh, Devon's in love with Stephanie. Did you hear that, oh, Triple H? Oh, my God. I, I text Stephanie. I said, Stephanie, she, she started laughing. She goes, Devon, I know. She was like, they took a word and just ran with it. But you ain't got, she's like, you ain't got to tell me. I know you're infatuated with me. Everybody's infatuated with me. Yeah, but she, she was joking. Like you know, she, she, Yeah, she was joking. You know, we, we have laughs. Stephanie is funny like that. And, um, you know, I just remember when I saw those... Um, internet stuff going on, I went, my heart dropped. I said, oh my God. I was like, why would they do that? Why? I was like, you no. know why they do that. Come on, let's be real. People uh, want to Listen, I them. told, I, it's funny. My wife was looking at something on the internet to where it was like, you know, couples in WWE and they had me and her in it. Some of the comments were, I thought Devon was gay and this and that, blah, blah, because I was upset about the sheet writers. Uh-huh. When I had my stroke, and I had my back surgery, they like put me out the pasture. They thought I was dead. They were making people think that I was on like one life support. And so I went off and on my podcast that I had at the time, Table Talk, and I went off on it. And then I said, well, what happens if I said I was gay? Would you use that as front news? I was like, like, okay, so I'm gay. And guess what? I'm going to be on the RuPaul Drag Queen show too. I was like, now let's see if they do that. And sure enough, the next day, Devon's gay. He said he was gay. Devon's going to be on a RuPaul Drag Queen show. And I, I I just remember looking at my wife and going, "You got to be kidding me! Yeah. These idiots really did that." They can pick and up anything it was great. you say at this point. You know, social media is such anything. a cesspool for. They could literally take this podcast and cut up little things and put stuff together mm-hmm. and be like, "This is what Devon said, and this is how he said it." It's happened before where people will say, "Oh yeah, this is." They said this, and I've had wrestlers literally reach out to me and be like, "This, you know, this as well as how he said it." And I said, "No, one hundred percent." And I fight back and I'll say something and be like, "If you actually listen to the full podcast, that's not what he said, or he said it this way, and you guys are just taking it and running with it." The things mm-hmm. that people will do, even if it's bad publicity, to get like. That's what kills me because I will never bullshit in that sense. I will never sit here and be like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to say this for clicks. I never want my guests to feel that way. I never want you guys to think that's what I'm running with and that's what I'm doing because what I'm doing is I just want to have conversations with my friends about pro wrestling because I fucking love it. And that's what we're going to talk about. And you have the history and you have that knowledge. And I just like hearing this kind of stuff. So I just hate that negative bullshit. And it is everywhere. And it sucks that it's everywhere because it takes away from the good shit because that's not people don't want to people get bored of positivity, exactly. which is sad. 
But exactly. Oh, so man. I will say this on your show to all you dirt sheet writers. <laughs> I'm not gay. I said that because of the fact that some of you assholes would take it and put it out there when it wasn't true and to see if you would actually bite and you did. Number two, I didn't have one foot in the grave. I wasn't dying. Yes, I had a stroke. Yes, I had back surgery. I said, but I'm still here live and living television. Kicking. kicking and going. And also, I like Stephanie McMahon as a person, as an individual. I respect her. No, I'm not in love with her. She's in love with her husband, just like I'm in love with my wife. So please stop the negative uh, sayings and going on and putting it out there just so people can click on to your site. Yeah. And about everything. That's a, that's a PSA. Let's put that one out there. Let's just make that yes, a headline. That. Stop with yeah, the negative I mean, bullshit. Yes. Stephanie is a very good friend of mine. She, she talked to my wife when I had my stroke and she was there all in all. And I will always respect her and admire her and Triple H for my, in my time of look like, you know, when I, when I was sick, they were both there to welcome me back and, um, was able to really, really give me the boost of confidence to get better, and that's exactly what happened. But you won't see them print that. No. You won't see that's that. Boring. You won't see that. That's, that's too boring. boring. man. What a, I'm putting now. over people. Yeah, I'm yeah. putting over people. I'm not burying them. Don't do that. Don't do that. We all know you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, come on. That's just not – that's not how we do things here. <laughs> Who else can we bury? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of Stephanie, obviously it was great to see her and back – I, I, I hope she's really, really back. I don't know. Nothing's mm -hmm. been confirmed or anything like that. But um, speaking of obviously in Heyman, you know, I think the saddest part about Paul about Roman losing is that now if he takes some time off, we're not going to see Paul Heyman on our screens every single week with him. Uh, you might see him with somebody. I don't well, know. that's he what I was going to ask you. So th that's what I was going to ask you. Who would you like to see him advocate with now i can see i i can, you know he speaks highly of this individual and uh, i think with everything that's going on right now punk i think cm punk would be great because he speaks very highly of punk mm. you know anytime in a conversation and him and punk do have history together so to see those two uh together you know if roman decides to take some time off which is well deserved after what he's put in for the past four or five years um, you know, it'd be great to see uh, Paul maybe, you know, go with Punk and then maybe a year down the line or when, if Roman decides to take some time off, it would be great to maybe even see Punk and Roman go at it for, oh, yeah. for the wise man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wonder you know? too if they're going to set this up to make, if The Rock's going to come back and make it like a Roman Rock situation. We saw Raw after Mania. I think they're kind of writing the story for Cody and The Rock now for the next WrestleMania because mm -hmm. first 45 minutes of Raw after Mania was the two of them again. Because I don't think Rock is ever like, I'm out. I'm, I'm not coming back, which is kind of what I love. He always leaves the door open to come back to the WWE. Listen, like, we could be 110 years he's old. He's never going to We're going to be with our walkers, front, yep. front, front teeth popping out of our mouth. Still trying to do what we do best. Yes. No, I know. You guys are crazy. I say this all the time. Pro wrestlers <laughs> are insane. And I I don't know how you guys do what you do. And I just talk about it. I don't even have to do it. And I'm just like, well, you're all a little crazy. But I love you guys anyway. <laughs> um, but that's interesting. See, someone like me, I would love to see Heyman and Punk. I think that would be a really cool thing. But I don't think Punk needs mm -hmm. him because Punk is so epic in what he does. I would No, rather... Absolutely. I, well, listen, yes. Roman didn't need Paul, but those two were great together. Yes. You know, those two were great. So, no, does Punk need Paul? No. But to put those two together, I think maybe the magic can be even bigger than what Punk would do by himself. It would just be that much bigger to add Paul him into the mix. Look, a lot of people, you know, like Bobby the Brain Heenan, uh, you know, Jimmy Hart, like Jimmy, the Hart Foundation didn't need Jimmy, yeah. but bringing Jimmy on made the Hart Foundation even bigger That's than true. what they were. You know, Andre, um, as a heel, uh, when he first turned uh, and, you know, ripped the t-shirt and the cross off of Hogan. Yes, we needed Bobby then to endorse Andre as a heel, but after that, we didn't need it anymore, but it just made Andre even bigger than what he was. So, in my opinion, I think the collaboration between Punk and Heyman would be great. Yeah. I think it'd be great for business. I, I, listen, I don't hate it. I would rather see him with like a younger guy.
guy that's on the up and up that kind of needs the advice from him, the guidance of him. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, like a Braun Breaker who's now fully done with NXT coming into the main roster and he's got all this hype around him and he's so good. Imagine like another big guy with, with Heyman that Heyman's just advocating for that's really starting that career with him and gets to guide him through it. That would be well, you know a what? cool story. Well, you, you know what? How about this? How about we go back to the 80s? How about we go back when you had Bobby the Brain Heenan, you had Jimmy Hart, you had Lester Johnny V. Everybody had a stable back then. Yeah. Captain Lou Albano. Why not have like a Heenan family all over again? But instead of a Heenan family, you have a Heyman family. I like so that. you have Punk. You have a couple of other young guys that can get that boost you know, to, to move up. How about not, how about reinvent that again? Yeah. And maybe bring that back aboard, you know, have, you know, you know, MVP have his own stable, oh, you know, man. you know, it, it would be great to have these guys, you know, be able to bring looks like that back from the eighties. It was so popular, yeah. you know, and to have that, to have that second or third man on the outside, I think it would be great to have a, a manager bring back the days of the managers and, and things like that, you know, there's so much more storytelling that you can do uh, in terms of that. So I think that would be phenomenal if they ever decide to go that route. Yes. You know, I actually agree. Maybe, maybe they're listening. Maybe it takes, you know, I don't think these are bad ideas. I think we, I think we got something going here. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I think I hope to see him every single week. He was a highlight for me, Paul Heyman. I think mm -hmm. insanely well-deserved in the hall of fame. He's one of my favorite people to watch on TV. And I will always say this, and he's not even a wrestler, which I love so much because he brings you in with the storytelling and the emotion, which is what drives me as a fan to watch every day. Um, mm -hmm. before we go to, cause we have to wrap soon. This is, this is my final question. Give me the best, um, bully, like Devon story from maybe from the roads, like whatever. Do you have one good story maybe to embarrass him a little bit? I don't know. I got, I got, I need something from the realm from, cause you know, it's, if it's from the vault. He's probably <laughs> fucking told it already and he doesn't care. So we need it from your side. We need a good one. To, just to just oh, to end man. lightly because we've gotten into some heavy stuff. <laughs> okay, let me let me see. Uh, gosh, there's so many. There's some I can't tell. Yeah, don't, uh, yeah. Tell me those <laughs> off off air for sure. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, Bubba and I traveled a lot together, but then we didn't travel a lot because I traveled a lot a lot with Maven mm -hmm. and Umanga, Batista, Rey Mysterio. Dawn Marie, people like that. So um, we did, uh, oh, <laughs> ECW story, funny one. We were in Fort Lauderdale uh, promoting the ECW show for Fort Lauderdale. And we're at a red light. And at the red light, these, <laughs> these girls walk by. And it was myself, Big Dick Dudley, God rest his soul, with him, Bubba and sign guy and uh we're in the car these girls pass by and big dick dudley alex goes bro look at those girls nice Papa goes dick they're big and he turned around and looked at us he goes so are we <laughs> <laughs> we just all fell out of there that's amazing. just all fell out another story i remember where Bubba, basic me, me and Alex would always do things. Big Dick Dudley would always mm -hmm. do things to kind of push Bubba's buttons. And I, I went to the uh, to the room because we weren't rooming this time together. It was Alex and uh, Bubba. And I remember I, I went to the wanted to use the car to go to the gym. Bubba wasn't in the room at the time. He went. I don't know where he was. So I said, Alex, do you think I can take the car and go to the gym? He goes, Yeah, go ahead and take the car. So I took the car, I go to work out, I'm in the middle of my workout and I get a phone call from Bubba. I ignore it, push it, you know, just push it to voicemail. And like every five more times I go, Bubba, what is it? He goes, what the hell are you doing? I go, I'm at the gym. He goes, you cannot drive the car, Devon. I did not get the insurance. What the hell? Oh I'm like, Bubba, I'm like, relax. I didn't injure the car. So now let's go six, let's go six years down the road. We're in WWE now. Uh -oh. He comes to me, he goes, Devon, can I have the keys? Are you, well, we're going to go to the gym. I said, who's we? He goes, ah, me, 
me and the rock we'll go to me and rock we're gonna go to the gym in the morning i was like i'll go later he was like all right so him and rocky decided to go out drinking and they're in the parking lot of the marriott hotel in seattle and i didn't know what they were doing at the time but finally the morning time wakes up i go downstairs there's no keys at the front desk i said bubba where's the keys he goes oh sorry divine it's in my room come to my room again i said okay so i go to his room i get the keys i said where's the car he tells me where the car is i said okay fine i get downstairs to the parking lot i find the car the whole front end of the car oh is gosh. bashed in it's bashed in the side of the car is bashed in i called him i said bubba i said what the hell happened to the car he goes oh well me and rocky were drinking and you know rocky took his car and you know i had i had hours and we just decided to play bumper cars i go you played bumper cars with a rental car oh are you out of your effing mind i was like i didn't have the insurance on oh <laughs> he's like divine he was like relax don't worry about it rock will pay for it so i go to rock i go rock he goes divine what's going on i go your ass i want money he goes for what i go you wrecked the car he goes oh yeah by the way <laughs> yeah i'll pay for it don't worry about it i said one of y'all better give me some money for that car that's a lot of damage <laughs> so they Wizard. they did crazy yeah they decided to play bumper cars in the goddamn marriott uh parking lot uh with two rental cars one being mine <laughs> I hope they paid for it. I hope I hope yeah, they no, got taken care of for you. They did. They did. Him and Rocky both split it, so yeah. it was cool. But I, every time I see when I saw Rocky at the Hall of Fame, I was like, maybe it'll be a good time to tell him that I never received that check because right. you know he's big balling now. So hmm. he got uh, about it. twenty thousand. Yeah, about twenty thousand dollars for that car, Rock. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, maybe maybe fifty thousand make a profit off of it at this point. You know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> make. Make a huge profit. Yeah. <laughs> well, Devon, thank you. By the way, shout out, Bubba. We love you. Um, yes. <laughs> thank you and so Rock, much. And The Rock, we love you. And The Rock, too. I don't know him, but I'm sure I would love him if I met him. But maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day he'll come one on the day. pod and we could talk about it and I'll bring this up for him. Um, yeah. But thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking to you. I feel like the time just thank flew you. by. Um, it really did. You're the best. And this has been great. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. No, thank you for having me. And anytime you want me on here, I'll be more than happy to go on. You are the best. And as always, for everyone listening, we will have another episode next week. And I'm sure more crazy shit will ensue for us to talk about. So I cannot wait. Until then, L-Y-M-N-B, love you most, no backs, my friends.